Hello, it is me, that divination witch. I hope you're all doing well. Now, uh, you will have guessed by the title what this video is about. I will be talking about seven of my things I would do differently <laughs> if I could, if I could time travel, if I could go back in time. Uh, I'm going to talk about them, maybe help some of you guys avoid these pitfalls because I don't want to call them mistakes because what is a, m a mistake? I could ramble on for days so let's just get into it all right. If you don't know who I am welcome my name's Sarah and of course I go by that divination witch online. Now I started my social media on TikTok posting readings and now I'm on YouTube and I, I much prefer it here. I love YouTube. I get to share my journey. I get to share information I've learned, help you guys. And I just try and be down to earth, practical, realistic. If you like that, please hit subscribe. And I've also got a link tree. It's just below. If you're interested in getting a reading from me, I've got an Etsy and I've got a Patreon as well. And I appreciate every single one of you who trust me and buy a reading from me or support me on Patreon or, you know, anything like that. It really goes a long way. Thank you so much. Yes, I try not to live in regret. We all have them though, <laughs> but I do feel like things happen for a reason and the way things happen shape us into who we are as people and that's no different with spirituality but when it comes to spirituality and witchcraft and, and anything of the occult <laughs> well there's a lot of things that I would do differently if I was starting my journey now and I'm going to list some of those things to hopefully help you guys so number one thing the first thing I would do is to take my sweet time slow it down take each step as it comes each day as it comes it's not a race and a lot of you guys i've noticed the people i do readings for especially when you're new to this are excited and want to know every single thing and i'm no different because i did the exact same and i feel like a hypocrite telling you to slow down <laughs> hold your horses but from experience please, please try. <laughs> I know how exciting it is when you have not been spiritual and then all of a sudden, you know, you're getting into this, your eyes are opened to this whole new world. And there's so much information out there as well. You want to know everything. You want to know if you've got spirit guides or guardian angels and what they are and what that means. And do you have a past life? Do you have more than one past life? Do you have a deity? And who are they and why? And is there more than one? And why? Is it a past life thing? And who were your ancestors? And can you contact your spirits? Is there spirits haunting your house? Is uh, you know, is there anything you can do spell wise? You know, and spell wise, if you're into witchcraft, it's kind of like running before you know how to walk. A lot of people dive straight in with that manifestation, with that love spell, with that, you know, something like that sort of thing. Uh, Instead of taking your time and learning yourself first and and going in there with protections and things, and that's something I'll talk about in a bit. But yeah, it's taking time because I did the exact same thing. I got to a point though that I got so overwhelmed. I had I had to stop and Hecate was a part of that. She was like, look, look you're gonna have to stop here. You're gonna have to slow down because we're only human. You know, I've mentioned it before on my channel. I got to a point in deity work where Hecate was the first. I discovered her, but then I wanted to know more. And then more and more deities I was accepting into my life, you know, from different pantheons, things to do with my past lives, things to do with my ancestors, things to do with me just being interested in them. And I was running out of time and energy you know, I'm a human, I've got to go to work full time at, at the moment, I do this as well. Uh, even back then I'd started doing readings for people just slowly and gradually. But back then, even though I never did this, I, I was still overwhelmed. So you can only do so much. Don't beat yourself up over it. This is something that takes years and years and years, if not a lifetime, to to learn and 
we change as humans, no matter what, we're always changing and growing and learning. So just see how it plays out. The second piece of advice, <laughs> the second thing I would do differently, well, it would be to not feel pressured to fit in. And I know this could apply to anything, not just spirituality or witchcraft, but I feel like I pressured myself into following certain things, into doing certain things because it was the norm, because I didn't feel witchy enough if I wasn't, you know, out there, uh, you know, doing certain things like, I don't know, I kind of, I, I feel like I kind of forced myself into a box a little bit when I was on TikTok doing readings and I was doing a lot of bone throwing things because that was a trendy thing to do and and it turns out you know that's not really for me I didn't respect the spirit the way it should be respected and I don't think a lot of people do that if I'm honest uh and I've talked about this on my channel before uh you know there were there was things like that that I kind of chucked myself into, chucked myself into learning more about past lives than I was capable of at first, you know, because I felt like, well, if I don't know some of my past lives, then I'm not that enlightened sort of thing. Uh, it could be anything. Also, even feel, feeling silly for saying you are a witch, I still sometimes get that because I call them muggles, <laughs> the people who aren't into this, you know, might might say, oh, you're crazy or whatever. And it's that pressure of feeling like, oh, well, I dare not tell anyone. Well, were they your friends in the first place? Do they even deserve to know? Don't feel pressure. Uh, third thing I do differently, oh, when I first started, when I was a baby witch, writing everything down. Now, Traditionally, witches have a book of shadows or a grimoire or both. And that, in a nutshell, is a book that their spells, their rituals, their personal things are written in. Uh, and it's, you know, especially in the olden times and, and especially in covens now, grimoires are like passed on to the next generation. It's kind of like think of Charmed. I know Charmed is not real life and that show has so many problems, but they've got this spell book or Sabrina's magic spell book, you know, it's that traditional thing of, right, that's your family spell book or that's, I don't know, my weird witchy aunt spell book. <laughs> I felt a pressure to write every single thing down. Now, for me, I, I like to write and it is useful to write some things down. I mean, to this day, I still write my personal readings down and it's just over the years journaling that even just briefly has helped me learn tarot don't really need to do that anymore but I still do because it wasn't just learning tarot it was also like keeping a record in a way of of how much I've progressed through the years but writing down every single crystal writing down every single herb correspondence we are in the 21st century <laughs> we, we don't need to do that, we have the internet. We have resource books. I mean, I've got bookshelves of, of, of bookshelves of reference books myself, and I've got online books. And honestly, even if you write it all down, I was finding herbs, crystals, things like this have multiple correspondences. So, as a baby witch, as a beginner, say, I wrote down cinnamon was for good luck and money and manifestation, which it is. But cinnamon is also for cleansing and banishing. And I, I didn't write that down, you know. It was, it was this weird pressure of having to have a perfect catalogue of me and my practice. Uh, you don't have to have that, all right? You just don't. So get that out of your head if you're a newbie. You don't have to have anything fancy. If it helps you, great. Don't get overwhelmed. Uh, but number four... And this still gets to me sometimes today because I'm not immune to it and no one is. If they say they are, then yeah, you're a fibber. <laughs> fear. Letting fear take over. Letting fear control me. Uh, I still get triggered sometimes by fear, especially, it's not limited to, but, you know, toxic Christianity, everything's a demon. You know, I sometimes wonder, shit, what if I am? working with actual demons that want to eat my soul and I'm going to go to hell and blah, blah, blah. It's brainwashing. 
logically, I know that this isn't the case. Even though there is a fair amount of anti-logic in spirituality, because it's a belief, it's a faith, uh, it's believing in something supernatural, I suppose, but I know Hecate isn't any of those things, despite the fear mongering, and that's why I'm here and sharing things I do. Uh, and there are a lot of people on social media who thrive off the th fear mongering for clout, because saying things like demon and hell and you, all these nasty, nasty things and evil, that's going to get more views than fluffy things, you know? Uh, it's the shock factor. It's the fear factor. It's like why horror films are a thing. <laughs> so it's not listening to that. Don't let others put their fear onto you because a lot of the time it is for clout. It it, it really is. And people like that, it's, it's a way they get views and they get an audience. That's how they're growing their channels and things like that. Number five, judging others. I... I hate to admit it, but we're all only human, <laughs> and so am I. I have judged other people, uh, especially in my earlier days, harshly. <laughs> mm, I wasn't nasty, you know, flaming someone online or something like that, or, or spreading their name uh, in bad ways online or anything, but I have judged people's connections with deities and people's connections with spirit. Uh, even internally and it's in recent years that I've come to realize that no that's not okay and I've had judgment placed onto me as well even at time of filming I've had something happen where uh, someone was whether they meant to or not someone contacted me about Hecate and I felt like my path was being judged uh, whether they meant that or not you know I'm not going to get into that but you know there is something, wasn't there a saying in the Bible itself, he who casts the first so stone, something like that. I've, I've never been mega strict into the Bible, so I don't really know. But I do know that judging somebody else will backfire on you. <laughs> it really will. And it's not a nice feeling. So, you know, there will be people out there, and Hecate's teaching me this right now still, there will be people out there who think you're crazy, think you're nuts, think this is a load of crap. I mean, there are people of all sorts of different religions. There are atheists. You know, it takes all sorts to make up a world. So no one is ever going to agree with you 100%. Like, not everyone. And that's okay. And it's learning that that's the case. It's accepting that that's the case, uh, which I have done. But when somebody judges you and your connection with your spirits and your deities and your team and what you believe, oh, I still struggle with that a little bit, I'll, I'll be honest. That's why I, I personally will never say I am a high priestess of Hecate or anything like that. Although I've mentioned in videos before, I feel that that is the case. But I'll never label myself anything like that because I try and be humble. Uh, no one is better than anyone else. They're just not. Uh, I do not believe that. We all have our talents and we all have our flaws. So if somebody out there really loves Loki, for example, and I'm using him as an example because I have judged people who uh, are close with him <laughs> simply because he is a very popular guy, especially because of Marvel. And there are a lot of people who say they're God spouse to Loki. Uh, now, whether that is real, whether that is a figment of their imagination, it is not for me to judge. It isn't. And it's not for you to judge either. Unless they're harming you personally, unless they're harming other people, then I may step in. But if they're living in their own little bubble, and you know what? that might be how they cope with life, get on with it. That's what I've learned because I've tried to step in and I've tried to help people with things like that, their delusions and stuff like that. And it's backfired onto me. Uh, don't overstep. Even if you firmly believe it's a delusion, that's not for you to say. It just isn't. And 
same goes for, you know, anyone wanting to judge me and my connection with Hecate, you know, uh, you might think that Hecate isn't, you know, as close to me as I feel she is or whatever. You might think Hecate has said this about me or whatever. Look, deities wouldn't do that anyways and our relationships with them are personal. So, yeah, just don't don't do it as, as best you can, you know. Uh, don't be an a-hole. <laughs> let, live and let live. Let people get on with it, you know. It's not hurting anyone. In in the grand scheme of things, life is too short. And that leads on to my next point, <laughs> which is allowing other people to affect you, allowing their judgments to affect you. So like I've said, I, I mean, I've been judged, you know, my connection with Hecate, you know, even a few videos back when I got into something with those TikTokers arguing over the dark feminine. <laughs> it's a few videos back if you're interested. But one of the nasty comments they were saying about me, which I saw is like, oh, that's that's not very hecate of them. Oh, you're spreading misinformation. I'm sure Hecate wouldn't like that. Who are you to say what my connection with Hecate is? I try and respect everyone that mother loves. I really do. Oh, there's a police alarm outside. Uh, I really do. I try and see that, look, she loves us all. We, we're siblings in a way, you know, it's a kinship there. Let's not argue, let's not fight. But at the end of the day, not everyone's going to get along, even if mother loves more than one person, even if she's helping more than one person. Not everyone's going to get along there. I'm never going to say to someone, even if I don't agree with them, that, you know, heck it wouldn't be happy with you or whatever. That's between you and Hecate. That's between me and Hecate or you and whoever deity or you and whoever spirit, you know? Or if you're a Christian, it's between you and God, you and Jesus. You, you get what I mean? Like, we are not a deity. We are not a spirit. We are not a higher power to judge somebody else. So again, just getting into that. I fell into that trap myself. Hold my hands up, I have. Uh, but it's through time and through trigger, being triggered myself, through time, you know, you grow and you realise actually live and let live, let it go, it doesn't matter. Number seven, we're finally on the last point. <laughs> that is learning to protect myself first. Now, when I first started posting on social media, it was on TikTok and I'd been a witch about a year or two. I'd been fully into this. Uh, I started posting 2020, so it would have been about two years-ish. Uh, now, I was an observer for a long time, especially on TikTok, and let's be honest, TikTok is more toxic than here on YouTube. But I thought, you know, I'm going to start posting things. I, I wanted to share my gifts and help people. And, you know, I wanted to do readings and things like this. Uh, I used to do loads of freebies for people. That's a story for another day. Anyways, I thought all the dramas that went on on there were fictional. I really did. I thought that no one's going to hex me. No one's going to send me a hex or a bad vibe. What, because I've posted a tarot reading? What, because I commented on something? People are more mature than that. <sighs> no, they're not. They're really not. There are some wicked witches out there. They really are. Uh, I have been hexed several times off stupid crap off TikTok. And when I say hexed, sometimes it has been a literal hex, a spell done against me. And sometimes it's just been the evil eye. The evil eye is basically someone wishing you bad. It's bad intentions, it's bad vibes. You don't have to be a witch to give someone an evil eye energy. It happens a lot. And if you are going to be a witch in general, or spiritual in any way, in general, learn to protect yourself because people are pettier than you realise. But especially if you're going to start posting online, Get protections up for yourself, for your family, for your home, for your business, for your YouTube channel, your TikTok page, your whatever. Put yourself first and get multiple protections and learn how to protect yourself energetically. And 
have a balance as well and I'm guilty of the balance thing still sometimes I overwork myself and I'm almost at burnout because behind the scenes I've got a full-time job I do readings for people which I I, I love and love doing uh, but it takes time and energy and those readings although it might not seem like a lot when I type it out to you guys it can take an hour sometimes more especially those full deity confirmations I love doing them don't get me wrong but sometimes it takes such a long time and the energy but I, I'm digressing you know all these things and then you think of what can I talk about on YouTube right you've got to think of the ideas get the ideas from Hegarty sometimes or whoever all right I'll talk about that plan it out write a, a few little notes sit down record the thing then you got to edit the thing then you got to make the thumbnail and and promote the thing and it can't be a crap thumbnail because people won't click it <laughs> there's a lot of work and and thought and energy that goes into these things uh that even i didn't realize until i started this so protect your energy first because you don't want to end up like me getting burned out and then catching a flu and then you've got a forced break on your hands because that's what happened to me let me know if you've got any witchy recommendations you will give any newbies anything you do differently anything you change let me know put it in the comments below i love to hear from you and until next time of course stay safe stay witchy bye <laughs>